All right, so now we need to talk about the unit circle and symmetry. And this is where things start to get really confusing. But we just want to look at the picture and understand what's going on. So, so far, I've spent all of my time working just in these first 90 degrees of the circle. Oops, just in the first 90 degrees. That's called quadrant one. So we'll just call that Q1 here. But there are also other quadrants. There is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Now, the goal here is to understand that the things that happen in quadrant one also happen in quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So we only really need to understand quadrant one thoroughly and then just apply what happens in quadrant one to quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to create a symmetrical triangle in quadrant two, and we can take a look and see what that looks like. So here's our symmetrical triangle in quadrant two. Now, you should note a couple of things about it. Now, obviously, the hypotenuse is still one, because this is the unit circle, and that is the radius of the unit circle. Now, notice that this is the same height as this, which means that the uh, y-coordinate of this purple point is the same as the y-coordinate of this blue point. Also notice that this length is equal to this length. These are similar or oh, congruent triangles. Now, those lengths are the same, yes, but the x-coordinate of the blue dot is 0 0.56, but the x-coordinate of the purple dot is negative 0 0.56 because this is in the negative quadrant of the x-axis or negative half of the x-axis. I've just altered my label here slightly to say that it's cos of 56, because that's the 56 degrees, and sine of 56 degrees, which are these two values here. Now, what about these two values? What do those values represent? Well, that's equal to cos of 124 sine 124. Now, why 124? Well, this angle in here that you can see is 56 degrees because these two triangles are congruent. So this angle is 56, which makes this angle 180 minus 56, which is 124. I'm being very specific here, but if we change one angle, we change both. And this angle 60 relates to this 120 here. You can see that's 60 there, that's 60 there. So that larger angle from the x-axis to there is 120. So now what are we starting to create? We're starting to create relationships between quadrant one and quadrant two. That relationship is that if we've got some sort of angle in quadrant two, let's call the angle beta. So it's between 90 and 180 degrees or between pi on two and pi radians. We can say that it's going to be cos beta sine beta in there. We can also say that that's cos 180 minus theta. You can see that theta is a supplementary angle to beta, and that allows us to compare it to that Q1, and sine 180 minus theta, because beta is equal to 180 minus theta. Finally, we can say that that dot is equal to negative cos theta, sine theta. So we're taking Q1, we're pushing it into Q2, in this instance, 60 degrees into 120 degrees, and we're saying that they're equal, it's just that the uh, x-coordinate is negative instead of positive. Of course, you can see that this is going to head into the third quadrant where we've got a triangle waiting for us that is congruent to the other two. Um, now, the difference here is that we're in quadrant three, and we have a negative x-coordinate and a negative y coordinate. So how does that look in our little picture that we've drawn over here? So we'll just call this angle here from the x coordinate or from the x axis all the way around. We'll call that angle k. I know we're making a bit of a mess. Cos k sine k. Now that is equal to 180 plus theta. Okay. So we've got our little green theta in here and that's cos 180 180 plus theta, sine 180 plus theta. And then, of course, we can make it just as simple as we did in our, in our quadrant two, 
but this time that's going to be equal to negative cos theta, negative sine theta. So in our example over here, cos 60 sine 60 is the same as cos 120 sine 120, except there's a little negative here, which is the same as cos 240 sine 240, except there's a negative here and here. And it doesn't matter what that angle is, you can see they're all going to move together. Okay, those angles are all going to stay together, but they're related to each other. This is theta, this is 180 minus theta, this is 180 plus theta. Now here we are in quadrant four with our fourth congruent triangle and an angle that goes all the way from X all the way around to this line here. So not 60 degrees, 120, 240, we're up to 300 now. Here we are in the fourth quadrant with an angle theta between the X axis and there. My orange angle goes all the way around the circle here. In this case, it was 300 all the way from there to there. So that means that cos m sine m is the same as cos of 360 minus theta, sine of 360 minus theta. Need some brackets in here and here. And of course, that is the same as cos theta sine theta, but then we need to consider um, are they negative or are they positive? So cos theta here is uh, the x coordinate so that's going to be positive and sine theta here is the y coordinate and it is going to be negative and you can see that's the case right there now i really want you to get a conceptual understanding here of what's happening we've got symmetrical triangles all in all four quadrants those coordinates of our dots are what determine our cos theta and our sine theta now, of course, tan theta is another thing, but that's just sine theta divided by cos theta. And we'll look at that in a future video. Now, don't worry about how am I going to remember what's negative, how am I going to remember what's positive. There are some shortcuts that, that we can use that we will talk about in future videos. But this is a really sort of in-depth look at the symmetry of those triangles.